Welcome back here to my North Florida yard. Here we are near the end of February, maybe middle of February. Just thought I'd kind of give you a walk through to compare to what it looked like in the last video I showed you. Give us a chance to progress each time as the growing season goes. Uh, for those of you just joining, I'm here in North Florida in what they call the Big Ben Zone 8B. Let's start the tour and you can kind of compare this back and see what it looked like in the last tour. Just like the last one, I'll do a quick, just boom, boom, and then I'll do the guided tour. And keep in mind as we walk through the yard that we're right here at the end of winter. Uh, I am not one to get out in the yard during winter. So you may see some sticks and beds. We haven't started our cleanup yet. We're getting ready to do that. So keep that in mind because once winter sets in, I'm done with yard work and plants for the season. That's part of being a Florida boy. I'm going to try to control my pan and I did watch some of my other videos. I'm used to making videos on a bench where nothing's moving. I did notice in the Cracker House video, those of you that watched it, that I moved a lot. It kind of made me motion sickness, so I'm going to try to work on that. Now, if you remember in this pot, there were some purple hearts. They die every winter. They come back. If you look there, you can see where they're already starting to re-sprout. Uh, they do good. We're going to plant something. We put this bed in at the end of the season last year. Not sure if that bench was in the one that I did last year either, but we added that. That's that lantana I showed you last year that was over six foot tall and covered over 12 foot. I cut it back at the end of the growing season. Now, if you remember around this tree were those purple hearts also, they've died back. But as you can see, they're coming back. Rose bush has never really done much. It just barely survived. I don't think it's getting enough light from these big old pines. This cactus had got too big for us to move. This was the night bloom. This was a bridal wreath plant. It's just really starting to kick off. Azalea. Throwing a few blooms. Elephant ears. It's way too early. But they're trying to come up all over the yard. This is the boat area. Made some mistakes this year and forgot on one of the cold nights. Pineapple plants. They were bit back. I don't know if they'll come back. I've already harvested one pineapple off of both of these. And that one looks like it's trying hard. I can see green in the center of it. Those cactuses and those two pots were killed back. Maybe they'll come Got back. Got lilies just trying to come up. Now here, I don't know if you remember or not, but I told you I had the snake plants that had made it through three winter. They didn't make it through this last winter. The cactus that was in that bed, if you remember there's one on this side, and then there's one on this side. Can't even tell winter has hurt them. One of those is in the ground, one's in a pot. Bit the aloes back a little bit. Uh, they're still thriving and multiplying. I'll probably separate those smaller aloes this year get them moved out of there. These are the loquat trees. If you remember I showed you this row of loquats this past year. Uh, this is the third year they've been here. They're already showing signs of new growth, so I'm hoping that they're gonna thrive this year, I hope. Maybe put on some berries, some loquats. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty. Another elephant here that's been bit by it. Rose bush that grows on the windmill. I cut it back this year and transplanted some of those pieces along the fence. And we are still in the front yard. This is a shrimp plant we purchased from my job last year. Uh, did really well last year. Cold has bit it back. We'll see what it does this year. There's this loquat. Now here, if you'll look back, you'll remember last year, I had bought them giant elephant ears. I mean, if you look at that other video, you'll see how big they were and transplanted them. This bed was full of a smaller, more of a, I guess you'd call it a cup or an air style. Don't know what it'll do, but the ornamental peppers that I bought at the end of last year, I spread those seed under here when I scattered the new uh, pine straw. So I'm hoping to see a cluster of elephant ears with some caladiums come up in them and I'm and then maybe be surrounded by beds of ornamental different type peppers. Don't know how that'll work out. We'll see, just a little something to mess with. I built this about halfway through the year last year. The Confederate jasmine that you see that's growing on it, I purchased. We're about thigh high when I bought, purchased them and put them in the ground about halfway through the growing season. So that's what they've done. 
Uh, that arbor is about eight foot high, and you can see on both sides. Not only has it started growing up, it, but it's already reached the top and started growing over it. So I expect this year for it to completely consume that. This is a little project me and my wife worked on last year. Just simple little. Got some other plans for it as it develops. That's another one of those giant elephant ears that I bought, I had last year. This is the bamboo. Last year was its third year. Really started to flourish and throw some sprouts. Let's walk over and see. It may have some new sprouts already starting. Hoping maybe we could see a shoot here that was new, just popping out of the ground. It may be a little too early yet. If you plant bamboo, I suggest that you do your research first because some of this bamboo really spreads. The guy I got it from had warned me of that, and so I planted it here in a spot where I could kind of contain it around it, which I have already had to do. But no, I don't see no new sprouts yet, so. But I'm gonna try to do one of these about once a month as the growing season progresses. So maybe you'll get to see what that looks like as it's just breaking out of the ground. Now this bed last year was full of lilies. This is the one that's beside the driveway. But during the spring, this will be covered back with hanging plants all around here. We've moved them under a makeshift shelter. You'll remember last year, there were elephant ears planted along here. You remember around this tree were some elephant ears. This is on the other end of that patio. And also here was a peace lily. This is the first time it's killed it all the way back. There was some Hawaiian Thai. I would expect that to come back. Around this tree, we had freshly planted this previous year. Some uh, Monstella, Monstera philodendron. I've been told it'll come back. We'll find out. Now these little green sprouts that you see popping up, before I had these here, I had lilies here. There's another one over there. Uh, when I dug them lilies up, apparently I didn't get all the bulbs. So that just popped up in them. This is another one of the loquats. It's on the shady side. It's still growing, but not thriving like the others. I want you to look at this elephant here right here now it's dead right now because of the winter but if you'll notice that's two trunks that come up that trunk splits into two separate elephant ears and this trunk it's kind of hard to tell because of the pine straw but does the same thing here we go see how it splits so there's two trunks with four branches coming off. And if you look, this one is splitting again. So that'll be one main trunk, two split trunks, and then two other split trunks off of that. We purchased two of these plants from Esposito. One's planted here and one's planted in another spot I'll show you. Then we come around here. There's some elephant ears planted here trying to come back. A little too early, they're probably gonna get surprised. As we come to the corner of the yard, this steel ring you may not recognize, but last year it sat right here and had the purple heart growing out of it. I cut that back, transplant some of it, attempting to move it and it fell out. That's what you're looking at on the ground. So we're just gonna leave it laying right there, let it root and let it grow. I do have some bulbs that I got a couple years ago from a co-worker that were coming up here. They're starting to really get into their prime. Now this is the corner. You may remember this phyllo, this this was a giant philodendron. Covered a big area. It lasted the last two winters. This winter it killed it back. Uh, I was told it would grow back, so we'll see this year. The jasmine that's growing on the fence. Now that cedar tree you're looking at right there just come up on its own. I'm assuming from a bird on the fence because you'll see that hook. My wife does have a bird feeder normally during the right spring is fill a book with bird feed. We've got jasmine on this side. I think the shade has kind of kept it back, but we're coming between the oak tree, just as a reference. That we planted, we, we strung some string up on the tree at the beginning of last year. 
uh, the jasmine took off up it. I'll be curious to see this year if it gets enough light to bloom up in the tree. What I'm hoping for is for this to grow a full curtain. Now, when it comes to philodendron style plants, I have discovered, I planted this as a split leaf philodendron. I planted this last year, about halfway through the year. This is directly beside the Monstera philodendron that I planted last year. The sun rises from that side and the wind's blowing from that side. It killed this and this survived. I do have another one of these on the property. Uh, it also survived. You can see as we get down the fence here, the jasmine gets stronger on this side and grows better. That's because this is the side that gets the most sun. You should really smell that during bloom time. I keep telling you about these points for those of you that's watched the other video, and if not, I suggest you go watch the other video of what it looks like during the spring. These are just some ornamental type grasses that we planted in front of this plow. We had planted a rose on this plow hoping it would do good. Uh, I don't believe it's going to. I don't think it's getting enough sun. So this year, if it don't do something, we're going to cut it in pieces and transplant those pieces into some pots and then move the main trunk somewhere else. A fern that we forgot to take in. Maybe it'll come back. Now, this is the other one of those elephant ears that I told you that I showed you with the split trunk. We bought both of these on the same day. Uh, this one has been extremely prolific in putting on babies. You see those all around it. I have already dug them up one time last year and transplanted some into other places in the yard. Generally, this spot here behind the swing in between this low quad and this elephant ear, there's ginger plants growing during the spring. That's the dead canes off of them. So it kind of blocks this view, gives us some privacy. And then generally, in relation to that, we have the swing here with the plow and the split leaf. In between that is ginger generally growing. As you can see, the banana trees all the way down are killed back. They'll come back during the spring. When I planted that in the ground, it wasn't four inches tall last year and wasn't as big as a pencil. And I didn't plant it till late in the season. Sago palms, lots of those. Well, before we step to the side yard right here last year, I showed you some pepper plants. We planted that citrus tree last year and I had some elephant ears that are planted along the end of this bed. There were some bell peppers and hot peppers here. We're going to leave those pepper plants. I have seen them come back. They may come back. If they don't, we're not going to replant them in this spot because I'm going to plant more elephant here. This bed, we bought two different style lilies last year and put here. There you are. This originally is mostly bog lilies around this tree. We bought a red and yellow variety. I don't remember the names and planted two clumps there where we could get them to multiply. So before we get into the other side yard, let's walk out to the road. Now before we take the, the close-up walk. I'm gonna just kind of give you a pan, tell you a little about the front right here by the road. This is on the left side of my driveway, right in front of the front yard we just walked through. I created this build bed here, which isn't much to it because this is where the low point is, all the water rain runs off. My mailbox is also located right here. So uh, the mail woman pulls off back and forth. I did plant some sago palms in it, and I planted some purple hearts in it. Sagos haven't done real well because of the shade, but they are growing. Now, the bed that I'm going to walk you down on this other side, I planted a few of the sago palms that I got from somebody else. Originally, the bigger ones you'll see on that side. Year before last, last year, I finally turned it into a bed at the end of the year and transplanted some century plants over to it that we'll look at. And then about two months before the cold set in, I transplanted some elephant ears. They never really had a chance last year. I'm expecting them to come back. And I planted some other things I'll tell you about when we get over there. So let's start on this end by the mailbox. Now in this bed, I bought a white lantana last year, which is this that you see here. I've trimmed it back this year. It just took over. Uh, I don't know if it's to do with the genes or the breeding in it or the crossing. It really grew well this year, but it also put on some parts that had other color lantanas. That particular sago come from, I don't remember if it was 
was, I think it was Deacle Beach or Dark Island. It was given to me by a co-worker from down on the coastline. I planted it. It uh, has done really, really well. Uh, did not go through any transplant shop. Out in front of this, this is the bed that we're fixing to walk. Runs right down the side of the road. It's kind of hard to stand out because of the color correlation, but there's some sago palms. These have been in the ground. I started these bulbs in pots three years ago. And they were just the bulbs he had trimmed off. And I got some more bulbs. We're going to plant them this spring. I'll show you that. We'll progress with them as we go on these little tours. So as you come down, spaced out about every eight to 10 foot, I have planted these. In between these, in this spot in between these sagos, I've put purple hearts that'll come up here in the spring. I'm hoping for this whole bed to be covered with those. We have those sagos all the way down. Here, I planted a four o'clock. It really did well last year. Piles and piles of seeds. So I'm hoping to see it come back this year and really thrive. So as we step over to the other side of the gate, you can see the Confederate Jasmine is not done as well on this side, but it is planted all the way down this fence line. But on this side, the deer really devastated. Here is a bed of ginger. I just planted this ginger in this last year. Uh, so we'll see what it does this year. Now what you're gonna see in this bed is up next to the fence. This year, you'll see elephant ears coming up all the way down it. We'll look at a few of them that's trying to sprout. In front of every post is a sago palm all the way down it. And in between each one of those is a century plant. Now, this year, I made this bed actually out, out of pine straw. The sago palms had been planted from the year before. Century plants were transplanted last year and the elephant ears at the end of the year. And I laid the pine straw at the end of the year. When I laid this pine straw all along this fence, I put rose cuttings in the ground. And all between here, I put the purple hearts. And I also put some wandering dew. And then along the front of this bed, every foot all the way down it, I transplanted in some cuttings off of some spider plants. So I'll be curious to see if those come up this year. I'm going to walk down it just so you can see them to give some size comparison in the next video to what they're doing. Now, as an important note too, this side of the yard is being irrigated this year with natural rainfall and also it's being irrigated with sprinklers, with water hoses. The other side of the yard that we looked at this past year, I put underground sprinklers in. I aim to add some underground sprinklers this year to this. Keep in mind that all along here this year, we'll be looking for not only more Confederate Jasmine to come up, but some rosebush vines that we transplanted. So hopefully we'll see those. All along here you see these century plants. Now these sago palms that look better, they were actually dug up. Let me show you here. There's four. One that hasn't done much, but it is putting on pups. That one was not one. There's actually three. This one and this one were dug up out of a yard, laid out in the yard for probably about a week and then we're in the back of a man's truck and I got them, brought them home. Didn't think they were going to do nothing, but they did. They took root. And then we have sago palms here with our century plants planted in the and Keep in mind, all behind these, I forgot to show you as we go, but they only had about a month in the ground before the frost. But I transplanted elephant ears that are planted all the way down behind these. Now here I have a cabbage tree that grows up, a palm tree. In between this corner post and this palm tree, I didn't plant anything because I plan on eventually putting a gate in here for more access to the property. But around the base of this tree, I planted running rose bush cuttings this past year. At the end of the year, I just put them on the ground around it, broke it up before I put the old pine straw down. At the same time, I put a cabbage cut on top of Confederate Jasmine cuttings off a of wandering jew, cuttings off a of purple heart, and then every foot around it, I planted a spider plant cut, and then put the pine straw. So I'm hoping out of that something will come up and grow around that tree. Now on this side, down to here, I have a sago palm. I have not 
done the century plants yet. I have another century plant. I'm gonna cut some pups off of this year and plant in between them. And then I'm gonna come behind them and I'm gonna plant me some elephant ears down this side. Now the Confederate Jasmine was planted on this end, but the deer just keep it eat off. My goal is this year, about every 15 foot down this, I'm gonna transplant a cluster of about five banana trees every 15 foot down the front of this fence line mixed in with this. Now these sago palms down here are the same age as them smaller ones I showed you. The only difference is these down here get full sun for about anywhere from four to six hours a day through most of the year. I want to show you this bogan veggie that I got in the ground down here. I planted it. I don't remember if it was beginning of last year or the end of the year before. It came back last year, put on a few flowers, but didn't really thrive. So if you can just imagine what that'll look like with those banana trees planted all the way down every 15 foot and the rest of that stuff coming up behind it with the elephant ears, the jasmine and the roses covering the fence. Hopefully within a year or two, we'll have that made right. As we come into this side of the yard, we're gonna start here at the corner when you come in by the gate. If you remember in this spot last year, not much had done well. Uh, the only thing that's really done good and it really thrived was this sago palm. Yeah, I don't know, really know what happened because if you look back at that other video, this sago did not look that good last year. This is the same age as most of those little ones I showed you outside the fence, but it has boomed. Nothing around it has seemed to have grown though. Now, if you'll look back at that other video, you'll see over here, it may have been from a different angle, but I took some pictures last year. I don't remember if it was my wife standing there, a shovel stuck in the ground. It was just elephant ears everywhere, taller than she was. These were some lilies that I transplanted that really multiplied heavily last year. They're already starting to sprout new lilies. We'll see what they do. Now, coming into this side yard, I kind of got a little ahead of myself. If you remember, and looking at them videos, this row of dead banana trees. Look back at that video and you'll see them. This is kind of the entrance here. Let's just start there. Now this century plant here, I didn't cut the pups off of last year. I should have. I'm going to this year to finish up those beds on that end of the outside of that fence I told you about. It's a little project. I think that may have been in the video last year me and my wife did. Just an old mailbox sits out in the middle. We put a few basic gardening tools in so they're readily available. Now out in front of this row of banana trees is elephant ears. They are trying to come on up this year. If they don't do as well this year, I'll move those. Once again, we're back at that bed. Now I planted one elephant ear here year before last you can see the stumps of these now this cracked myrtle you'll see four of these with tags on them me and my granddaughter planted these this past year i accidentally deleted that video footage i was going to share it with you how we planted them but uh i accidentally deleted that we'll follow their progress so we planted them probably about a month ago right during the december maybe a little longer than a month ago these foxtails, you remember these sitting up on these stumps. Cold, but kind of hard on them. This was a four, uh, not a four o'clock, it was cold. I believe tomorrow, forever, or something. Puts on purple flowers. Once again, this is another bed of elephant ears that really flourished yeah, last year. Put on lots of pups. I planted the one you see there in the center. All the rest come up around it. Another crepe myrtle. Now we're standing between the row of banana trees. See that little bit of elephant ear. These lilies I planted around this tree at the beginning of last year. I had to move them from another bed. This is an oleander tree that I planted last year. Some more day lilies that I had transplanted. Let's take a pan. Let's take a pan back. That's where we just walked through. And all these points you'll be able to reference when you look back at the other video when everything was flourishing. Now behind these, I planted some palms. This palm here has done exceptionally well. I planted that at the beginning of last year and it was not more than about a foot tall. Frost did not seem to hurt it this year. This is a little rose bush out in front. It has just not done real well. The deer have murdered it. This is a cooney corn. It done really well. 
Frost does not seem to have hurt this. I can't remember what this palm is, but uh, Frost has really bitten it back, so I'll be curious to see how well it comes out of that this year. It did not fare well. These are sort of just a small row of gladiolias. One of my wife's friend gave her these. These were the first gladiolias she'd planted. They come back every year. You can see they're already coming back now. Uh, they have multiplied. Now, this plant right here was an elephant here. We also bought at Esposito's. It was a different variety. It's been here three years. This was a, I can't remember what that was, but it was a tropical type plant. You see that camellia there? It also grew sideways, but it puts on some flowers and bud. That with no leaves in front of it is a fig tree. I planted that at the beginning of last year. That is also a fig over there. I can't remember if these are called bromelade or bromelias. We transplanted these out of some stuff that come from my wife's grandmother's house. I just stuck them in the ground because they had been out of the ground, needed to be in the ground, did not have a real lot of care for them until one that was in a pot that you probably see on this same tour put on a flower last year now i'm in love with them so uh, i'm gonna do a little more research on these and we're gonna get them put into a better bed hopefully this year now this is a grapefruit tree that we planted last year i covered it most of the year the last two hardest frosts we had i just said to hell with it i didn't have time to cover all these plants things just didn't work out so these were some day lilies that I transplanted at the beginning of the year. You can see they're already trying to come back, but I do express the frost to kill them. This bed here is what we're looking at. We're gonna turn back this way. Around this tree was the elephant ear. You can reference that back. Now this oleander I showed you last year, my wife planted this from a cut from her grandmother. It's lived, it's never really done real well. It hasn't put on a flower yet. Last year, it had some stuff on it. I did spray it. Was not able to completely get it off. But uh, we're going to do a video this year, a couple videos on pests and diseases, and I'll show you some things that are labeled for it. We're going to experiment with them and see which ones work. Hopefully, you'll tune in for that. I can't remember what this tree was called. We bought this from a local nursery. Now, if you look at them leaves, you can tell the deer love this. That elephant ear right there, I did not plant. Apparently that sprouted from under the ground and came up and I see another one coming up right there. This bottle brush I planted late in the season last year. That's one of the pepper plants that's behind it and over there and over there that you see me showing and picking peppers off of last year. That's another bottle brush. It's a red bud tree we bought from a local nursery. Around all these trees here, you'll see in them other videos what the lilies look like when they grew. There was a cluster of elephant ears here. That's the bromelade that had that pink flower on it last year. Really made me more interested in trying to do something with them bromelades. It's a bird of paradise that my wife's mother yeah. gave her. We have some more of them Excuse planted me. on the ground. Hoping they come back this year. That bottle brush there is probably about 12 foot tall. Been in the ground for about, five, about either two or three years. Let's look at this one, see if we can see any new growth coming up on it. Yeah, no, but it still feels spongy, so I see one, two, three plant. This year, we'll try to get them put in the ground if they come back. This tree here, I did have some different elephant ears. I moved them, then little bulbs come up, but this will be covered by lilies. This is another citrus tree that I planted in the ground. Uh, it's not doing so well. It's got this thorn side coming off of it. I'm gonna study that and see if I need to cut that off. If that's just a sucker. This tree will be surrounded by lilies. You won't even be able to see the ground through any of this with an elephant ear cluster coming up here. We picked out these two Leland cypresses. This one has done a little something. It was as small as that one over there. Planted them both at the same time. I think most of the problem is lack of water. Hopefully this year we'll get some underground irrigation in on this side of the yard. I forget what these were called. They were supposed to run up this when we built it. Uh, they did not do well. Deer kept them eat back. We're gonna try to find something that's running that the deer don't eat. It was a type of, of rose of some sort. 
This is called a guava bush. I believe this particular variety from the tags at pineapple guava. Those dead canes that you see laying there on the ground, during the spring, you'll see this front area or this behind area behind this bench. It'll be ginger growing, ornamental ginger. This elephant ear that's right here, I transplanted this off of one of those espositos that you see over there. I noticed that it had new sprouts coming up from around it. This palm here was much like the one I showed you up front. It just did not fare well through the winter. This bed, I transplanted last year. We're gonna see how well it does this year. I transplanted some bog lilies around the edge of it. We'll see how well it does. That foxtail fern's been left out, I guess, from the shade of this oak tree. It survived. The fern on the other end didn't. That pot that you see there in the corner normally has the purple hearts growing out of it. There's another split leaf philodendron. Even though it's smaller, it's actually been there longer than the one that I showed you that survived over there. Doesn't get as much sun. I believe that's the difference. This was the devil's spine I showed you last year. It survived the winter before. Did not survive this winter. Oh, look. Right there. Can you see that new cane that's coming up? So maybe it'll pull through and come back. This is called African Lily, I believe was the name of it. I had a cluster of this around another tree. They said to thin it and it would produce. I thinned it year before last, it didn't do much, but this year I noticed it's kind of coming back a little thicker. And it also has some day lilies that I mixed in with it last year. They're coming back. Those bare trees that you see there, they just really started taking establishment. You'll see there are one, two, three of those right here. That's one, two, three. My wife transplanted these from some cuttings. She got out of her grandmother's yard. They've been in the ground three years. They finally last year really, really jumped. This is two more elephant ears that I transplanted off of those Esposito transplants last year. This is another citrus tree that I planted last year. I noticed it's got several suckers coming off. I'd do some research on that. It's a Satsuma. I may have to prune them all. This is another palm. As you can see, it did not fare well. It's a better shot of that palm. This is a tractor plant. It's been in the ground two years. First year did not do well. This past year, it actually bloomed and done real well. Frost has bitten it back, but it is still surviving. This is another palm that I just don't know if it's going to make it. I do see it's got some green coming back out of it. These are called Mexican petunias. I have two batch of these mounted on either side. They just have not been able to thrive. The deer keep them eat off. Now these are two birds of paradise. They made it through last winter unharmed. This winter, it knocked them back. Uh, I have hopes that they're going to come back. I hope. I noticed that on this one over here, we do have a green shoot that is coming up. So hopefully these are gonna come back. I have not seen a flower on these yet. Last year I planted a few right there at the end of the season, some old seeds I had here. Didn't expect them to do well, but wanted to verify before I threw them away. They did not do anything. We're gonna try to plant a few vegetable plants here and there. I don't know what they'll be, but just a little something. I'll show you what we just looked at. I call this our middle yard. From this pine tree over, to the gate. Let's pause right here at this stump. I have two of these stumps. I have this one. And then if you look across, I have another one over here. The first year I planted some pothos in them and some purple heart. They done real well. Last year the deer found those, kept them eat off. So this year what I plan on doing is transplanting a couple elephant ear bulbs in both of them and see what they do. The little cut pieces that you see beside them, I usually set a couple pots on of some planted plants. This is another oleander. I planted this oleander. And that oleander at the same time. Now, as we stroll through here, the center, there's not much in. I planted some grapevines. The deer eat them down. I'm going to have to fence them before I replant them. Not sure if I'll get to that this year. So as we walk, I'm going to show you plants on this side and plants on this side. These are some bulbs that my wife bought that come from Walmart. Different type lilies they put on some very pretty lilies. They've been surviving. 
Uh, this past year, they finally started multiplying. I'm hoping this coming up year, they'll multiply enough that we can put a real bed in. Behind them, I have another Cooney corn. That's another palm that just did not survive real well. Now this cactus that you see here, this just come up on its own. My wife wouldn't let me mow it. She put some rocks around it. It's really done well. Now along the fence on this end, you'll see Confederate Jasmine. It has struggled to hold on. But it's just not done real well due to the fact that the deer just keep it eat down. I planted it all the way down it initially with the other. This is another crepe myrtle here and one there that you'll see that I planted with my granddaughter. Now this bed here, we got some Spanish bayonets in and some umbrella plants. Surrounded by three pines. Last year, I had, I had all these lily beds I told you where I had to find, I had to clear out around an oak tree that I put in some philodendrons and all these lilies were planted there so I had to find places to put them. They've already got new lilies coming up. I planted a few around this pine and a few around this pine. Now these Spanish bayonets, this one has really, really thrived. I planted these in this bed. There's several, you can see that one. You can see another one back there. That one, these all come from cuttings. Now these umbrella plants, I love these. Looks a little rough right now, the winter worked on it. But within a month, you'll never know that. Back up and give you a view of that umbrella plant. Sun's a little bright. We'll hit it from two different angles. We'll hit it from this angle and from the other side. All right, now before we get to these fruit trees, which we do have a bloom on some, let me tell you a little bit about the history of these fruit trees that we're fixing to look at. I planted these on a whim the first year with nothing around them but some strings. The deer just keep them ate down. Uh, they were stunted the whole year. Every time they tried to grow, the deer just eat them. So as the season went on, they just, they never had a chance. So last year I bought some wire and went around them. They just didn't seem to pull out real well until right at the end of the season, some of them showed some signs. I was prepared this year based on this tree that we're fixing to walk over and look at. Uh, let's pause right here while we're here. This kayak we found damaged at Hagen's Cove, brought it home, filled it with soil, threw some succulents in it. Done really well last year and through the winter before. This year it didn't fare real well. The aloes in each end are still living. We're gonna probably clean that out this year and plant something else in it. Maybe some more succulents, I'm not sure. Behind it, you'll see these two beds. That was one of them Esposito elephant ears that I planted, I thinned out last year. I planted on each side. They didn't do real well last year, but it was their first year. We're gonna give them a little bit. And planted right there in the center, that old dead stump you see, it's a red bud. And then we also planted another red bud right there. Uh, their problem has been deer. Let's walk over to that tree. So after I put the fence this year, I noticed they're trying to do something. So I'm gonna let them go this one last year now that they're protected and see if they do anything. If they do, I will leave them. If they don't, next year we will dig them all now that we know the fence works and we will replant new trees. Now, as you can see, that tree is full of blooms all up and down it. This is a peach tree. I'm hoping with the cold that we've had this year to be able to get some peaches. Uh, see if I can get you a picture. There's bees all over it. See if I can get you a picture with some bees. There's two right there. Let's see if I can get you a see You see them bees? They are pollinated. I'm really surprised at how well that tree's doing. So we're gonna let it go on through this year. Now, this one and this one is an apple tree. I haven't looked at them yet this year, so you'll be seeing them with me for the first time. Looking for any sign of green or a bud on them. So far, 
I don't see anything on that one. We'll check it on the next video we do. Let's walk over to this apple tree. Now this apple tree does have, look at here. It's got green coming all out of it. Let's see if I can zoom you in there where you can see some of that. You see any of the green on it? And on top of the green, I see a bunch of leaves. And then right there, is a bloom. This is that other cypress stump that I pointed out to you earlier. It's hollow in the center. We're gonna try some elephant ears in it this year. Now this tree I wanna say was a peach also. If I remember correctly. So far, I'm not seeing any signs of life other than the limbs do still look like they're alive, but nothing's sprouting yet. Now, both of these two trees had leaves on them last year. I did get a couple plums last year. So far, I'm not seeing any leaves on it. So remember, this is about the middle to the end of February. We'll do another video. Now, something I can see, and I'm not sure if because of the wire I can get you in there close enough. those limbs I can see shines of life trying to show full. So it shouldn't be long. We should have some leaves on it. Now this next tree I'm going to show you, this plum tree is the one I got the peaches off of last year. This tree is probably 14 to 16 foot tall. It was completely covered in leaves. Really, really look well. No signs of life yet as far as green. But you can see on them limbs. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. I think the next tour I'll bring my selfie stick so that I can get you in there close. But it is showing little signs of life trying to push through the limbs. So that's pretty much our tour. Uh, but I do want to talk with you just a minute and let you know what I got planned for the season. So as you can see here in the winter, it looks a lot different than it did in the last video I did back in late summer. Everything fixing start growing. I'm gonna be tuning in a little more, giving you a little more videos. And we're not only gonna be going off of these different parts and be showing you that, but I'm gonna show you the progress as my yard grows throughout the year. We're gonna analyze any problems that we run into. I'm gonna show you solutions and we're gonna try different things and, and see what works. I'll walk you through how to use those products and what those products are and let you see me put them on. And then we'll keep up with the progress together. So there'll be a lot of short video clips just showing, you know, this is what we sprayed last week. And uh, we'll take that trip together. And these little outings that you're gonna see, I enjoy that. I go place and look at the natural Florida. There'll be a lot of botanical gardens and a lot of museums. I hope y'all are enjoying them and looking to get some feedback. So I appreciate this tour. In about a month, we'll do another tour. Uh, maybe in between then, you'll see me planting a few different plants. I'll show you and we'll track their progress all along the way. Just keep in mind, it takes patience. It's not gonna just jump out of the ground. So. I hope to see y'all back, and I appreciate you tuning in, and y'all have a good day.